I'm sitting here with uh, Mr. Aaron Beam, who is the uh, one of the original founders of Health South. Um, was along for this incredible journey where they were able to secure the, the capital venture from Citicorp, uh, went public and, and saw this incredible meteoric rise, uh, the Wall Street's a darling, uh, to have it crumble a few years later. Um, Mr. Beam had an opportunity to meet a number of our finance, uh, accounting, and also management faculty and some uh, students a little earlier today in a real intimate luncheon. And uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, Aaron spoke to our uh, undergraduate ethics class and was very well received. We had a number of very thoughtful questions that were posed by both faculty and students uh, throughout the day. And of course, I had my own, so I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Beam a question because I've been thinking a lot about this. You know, Aaron, in the in forensic uh, auditing, they talk about every criminal activity having really three key ingredients. They talk about motivation, opportunity, and rationalization. And I've read a lot about this, and I've thought about people who've been, been involved in various corporate scandals, and oftentimes I've, I've wondered and have tried to piece together what that would mean for that particular individual, whether it's a CEO or a CFO. And I can't resist, so I want to ask you that question. You know, when you think about your involvement uh, at Health South as, as one of the leading individuals in the C-suite. Can you talk to us a little bit about the motivation, the opportunity, and the rationalization? Well, let's start with the easy one, which is the opportunity. And this was a classic case that the CEO and the CFO and, and the chief accountant uh, all participated in, in the fraud. Uh, and of course, we had the opportunity because we were the top guys, and there was really other than the board of directors, which in many cases the board really doesn't know what management's doing, not on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we really answered to no one. So we, we had the opportunity to um, commit the fraud. It, it, was, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer as far as that goes. The motivation for it, um, that's the second question, right, is that uh, it wasn't the kind of fraud like in the embezzlement where I took money and put it in my pocket and it wasn't I, I really didn't participate in the fraud to personally enrich myself financially that that was part of it I mean I, I realized that if the stock stayed up by cooking the books I would benefit but that wasn't my motivating reason for doing it in fact the day that we, we decided to cook the books I had actually suggested to Richard Spursky that we report a bad quarter and take our lumps. But um, he did the classical thing of convincing me and my accountant that, look, we do this just once. It's for the good of everybody. If we don't do it, the stock is going to tumble. People are going to get hurt. Investors are going to become disgruntled. Um, we'll do it this one time. We'll get through this dark spot. Uh, this is the right thing to do, and, and uh, it was almost uh, a peer pressure kind of thing. I, I wanted to please stockholders, I wanted to please my boss, and that was the, the motivation for doing it, more so than uh, the classic, um, you take somebody like Bernie Madoff, his main motivation was to just take money from people, and uh, he was personally uh, making himself wealthy by committing a Ponzi scheme. This wasn't that sort of thing at all. So if I could maybe summarize, the, the motivation was that you wanted to please the analysts that were right. on the streets. The, right. the opportunity was that as the CFO and having your, your right. chief accountant, right. you were in the position right. to actually move right. around pieces. Right. Uh, ultimately the rationalization was we're just doing it this one time for this right. one quarter but uh, it right. continued and it became much larger. In, in of all the options in front of us, report a bad quarter, don't report a bad quarter, we rationalized that this was the best thing to do. That, that it would be a short-term fix. Yes, it was wrong, but causing stockholders to lose millions of dollars by reporting a bad quarter, this was a better option. Uh, faulty logic, obviously. I remember speaking at a conference one time and a person asked me in the question and answer period, he says, didn't you think about the day y'all committed the fraud, all of the harm you were causing and all of the, the financial hurt you were causing to investors when you did this? 
And of course, at the time we did it, we didn't think like that. Well, we thought wrongly that no, we were, we were trying to help the investors by not reporting a bad quarter. Uh, but soon afterwards, once you did it another quarter or two, you realized you were in the quicksand. And from that point on, you're doing it almost out of necessity to not get caught, you know, and just hope for the best kind of thing. But uh, as you probably know, I left the company within a year because I really could not live with myself perpetually committing the fraud. What's life like now? You know, it, it, I'm really okay. Uh, I went to prison. I can admitted my involvement. Uh, I've been truthful with people. I've written a book uh, about it, telling everything. Um, there's a lot of things in the books that aren't very flattering about me. And uh, uh, I hope people appreciate that I have come clean. Sometimes I regret because there's, there's a classic case that a guy goes to prison and then he gets religion. Well, why didn't he get religion before he was sent to prison? You know, so uh, while I don't profess to have gotten religion, I, I am now out preaching ethics, so to speak. Uh, and it does help me heal. It's cathartic that I uh, can try to make lemonade out of lemons from this. And one of the things that I really appreciated from your talk earlier with some of the faculty and, and the students, and of course with, with the class today, is this sense that you know ethics is a matter of knowing right from wrong. And, and these, much like 2,500 years ago with, with Socrates, are things that can be learned. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the real positive um, sense that you have about it and, and the hope because for the generation of students that we have now at the undergraduate and even graduate levels, from a generational standpoint, um, they don't know anything other than the corporate scandals, and you mentioned them, you know, mm -hmm. individuals from HealthSouth, WorldCom, Tyco, Enron, Adelphia, the list goes on and on mm -hmm. and on. So uh, I think it's a very uplifting, positive message going forward. I want to thank you for, okay. you know, sharing your time today. I know that we all benefited, and uh, we look forward to having you back. Well, great. Thanks for having me here. Thank you.